In this video I'll show to you how you can run stored procedures in your Maxed Fabric data pipelines using stored procedure activity. I will also talk about few other ways how you can run and use stored procedures in your data pipelines. Stay tuned. Welcome to the video, my name is Alexi and on this channel I cover Maxed Fabric and Azure related topics. In this video we're continuing our journey with Maxed Fabric data engineering and today we're going to cover running stored procedures in data pipelines. This video is also part of my Maxed Fabric data engineering series. A link to the playlist can be found in the description. But now let's talk about running stored procedures in Maxed Fabric data pipelines. For people not so familiar with stored procedures, a stored procedure is an object in SQL database like Data Warehouse in Fabric or Azure SQL database or basically any other de relational database, since most of them support using stored procedures. Stored procedures contains a pre-written SQL statement that can be saved and executed. It's like a function or a script that performs a specific task such as inserting data, updating records or retrieving information from a database. Stored procedures are useful because they can encapsulate complex operations and help ensure consistent data processing and improve performance by reducing the amount of data transferred between the database and the application. But now enough talking and let's open a fabric and check out how to run stored procedures in data pipelines. Now I have the fabric open and my data warehouse open here. Here I have a SQL script that I have prepared for today's exercise. And here the script first created a schema called fabric DE series 20. And to that schema we will create a table 1. And in that table 1 we have two columns, column 1 and column 2. Then we create our first stored procedure called stored proc 1. And this stored procedure takes in two parameters, param1 and param2. The first parameter is this kind of a string type or in database language a varchar type and then the second parameter is integer or numeric type. And this stored procedure is a very simple one and it will basically insert those parameter values as rows to this table 1 that we created. So here is the SQL statement that it will run. So insert into table 1 and select those parameter values that are coming to the stored procedure. And then we have our second stored procedure and this stored procedure is very similar to the first one, but this doesn't insert any data to the table. It will just basically run this select statement and select those parameter values and also select current timestamp as timestamp here. And I have already run this script, so we have all of these stored procedures and schemas available here. Here we can see the table 1, we shouldn't have any rows here yet, and then we have the stored procedures here as well. Now we can go back to our script and we can try to run one of the stored procedures. This is the statement that would basically run the stored procedure. So you're referring to the stored procedure and then giving it the parameters that you want. And this is our first stored procedure. Let's run this one and let's see what happens. It will take a little while to run. And after running this stored procedure, we can select all the rows from our table one and see that do we have new rows here. And we do have one row in our table. Basically, we just inserted these two values to our table. And if we would run this stored procedure again, we would get another row with those exact same values there. And we can verify that by selecting the data from our table and now we have two rows there. Next let's try to run our second stored procedure but this time let's give it a little different values than we had for our first stored procedure. Let's see what happens. And this stored procedure after run just returns the parameter values and then the timestamp as well, like we have defined in the stored procedure code. And next we would like to utilize these stored procedures in our pipeline and we can check out how that will happen. So let's create a new data pipeline and let's name that pipeline according to our naming conventions and then let's wait for our pipeline to load up and then we can add just the stored procedure activity to our pipeline. Basically this stored procedure activity is meant for running stored procedures and we can talk about a little bit more about this stored procedure activity. Before continuing with this video I would like you to know that I spent ton of my free time creating these videos for you and that's why I would like you to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more Max Fabric data engineering content. It doesn't cost you anything and I would highly appreciate that. But now let's continue with the video. 
And now we can talk a bit more about the stored procedure activity. Let's first open the settings tab of our stored procedure activity and here we define the connection that will be used for our stored procedure. Now I only see here some fabric data warehouses that could be used, but also stored procedure supports other SQL databases. And here we can click that more and see what are the currently supported ones. And here we can see that we could, for example, run stored procedures in Azure SQL database or Azure Synapse Analytics SQL DV or one of these other databases here, like on-premises SQL server database. But yeah, the process is pretty much the same when running stored procedures there. And we are going to use this fabric data warehouse here because it is the simplest one to use when you're using fabric. But yeah, let's close this and then we can just select the fabric data warehouse that we have been using. Next from this list we can select the stored procedure that we want to run and we can try to run first our stored procedure one. And after we have selected our stored procedure, we can define the parameter values for our stored procedure. If you remember, it had two parameter values. We could either write those parameters here, or we can click this convenient import button that should import those parameters from the stored procedure to this pipeline. And here we have those parameters that we defined for our stored procedure. And now we could give some random values here. Let's write here pipeline value to our first parameter and then just 333 three, three to our second parameter. And now we could actually try to run this and see what happens. And it has already succeeded. And we can check out do we have a new row in our table by querying the table one. And now we can see that we have a new row in our table one and those values came from our pipeline. Next, we could try to add a new stored procedure activity to this pipeline by just copying this stored procedure activity. And then we can try to run our second stored procedure using this activity. And let's change the stored procedure to our stored proc2 and select it from the list. And since our second stored procedure had the same parameters as our first one, we don't need to import new parameters here. Let's write to our first parameter, hello, and then to our second, we can write three, two, one. And now we can try to run this pipeline and see what happens. Remember, our second stored procedure is not inserting data, it's selecting data, so it should be returning data. But yeah, now we ran those both stored procedures. And now we can go to our data warehouse and we can check out that we should have another new row in our table one. Yep, now we have two, two pipeline value rows with the, that 333 column two value. But what comes to our second stored procedure that we ran there? It was that stored procedure that should just return the data that we are giving it with the timestamp. So maybe we would like to get that data back to our pipeline, but we can check out the output of our stored procedure activity and we can see that we don't get really any outputs from that. And now I want to talk about some other ways how you can use stored procedures in your pipelines and return the data from the stored procedure to the pipeline itself. Let's start with the script activity. This is another activity that basically runs SQL and we can select our data warehouse here. And here we could define, for example, a script that we want to run. I'm not going to spend too much time discussing what is a script activity, but basically this is an activity to which you could write some SQL logic that would be then executed. And then you have two options here, query and non-query. And with the query option, you could actually return some data from the SQL script to the pipeline itself, like using the lookup activity. And with the non-query option, you are not really returning anything. And with this query, we can actually run our stored procedure too, that would return some data to our pipeline. And we could, for example, write to our first parameter value from pipeline, and then to our second parameter, we could add just number one. And now we would be able to run this using this script activity. And we can check out what happens if we now run this pipeline. And now our pipeline has succeeded and we have run all the activities successfully. And now we can check out the output of our script activity. And we can see that we returned some data. And here we have this rows array. And in that rows array, we have that data coming from our 
database or from that stored procedure execution. So we have those parameter values in the param2 and param1 values and then we have that timestamp also that we have defined in our stored procedure logic. And now we could use this data as dynamic content in the following activities in our pipeline. And now let's talk about yet another way of running stored procedures. And one other way would be using lookup activity. And with this lookup activity, we can select our data warehouse here. And after we select the data warehouse, we get these options to use query table, query or stored procedure. Of course, we could use this query like with the script activity and define manually the query to run our stored procedure. Or then we could use this stored procedure setting here and select the stored procedure like we did the, with the stored procedure activity. And also with the lookup activity, we are also able to return some data to our pipeline. And then we have actually yet another way of running stored procedures, and this would be using copy data. When we're using copy data and configuring our destination, we can actually use this advanced settings and define this pre-copy script. And here we can define SQL that is run before the copy activity runs. So basically we could execute some stored procedure logic in this SQL script here. So this is yet another place where we could utilize stored procedures and do some operations in the database before we load the data in. But yeah, I hope you now have an understanding what are the different ways that you can use stored procedures in your data pipelines in Microsoft Fabric. If you'd like to learn more about Fabric, check out this video next. Now, I thank you for watching and see you in that video.